Dale Larson here at the photo booth taking a look at the recently released Gundam Universe line of figures from Tamashi Nations and Bandai. These figures hit just a few weeks ago and or are possibly hitting right now. To what extent they will hit the uh, United States or anywhere outside of Japan, I do not know for sure. Uh, I believe they're going to be available at places like ThinkGeek or GameStop or I, I have no idea. I pre-ordered mine from Hobby Link Japan, but all your favorite Japanese online shops may have them as well, should have them. Uh, I first saw these figures back in February at New York Toy Fair and knew that uh, for sure I was going to be collecting them, uh, or at the very least I was going to be collecting the suits that I liked. Wave 1 was the original RX-78-2 mobile suit Gundam, uh, my personal favorite because for a long time he was the only Gundam that existed uh, it was the only one I knew of from the early 80s until probably the mid 90s so everything that has come after that has taken some adjustment to some degree uh, that said I loved all of the Gundam wing design so I was glad to see that uh, wing Gundam was also in the first wave uh, Unicorn Gundam was the third piece in Wave 1, but I decided to hold off on that since I have no real attachment to it, having never watched the series, and the suit by itself doesn't really appeal to me. Plus, uh, the whole gimmick on uh, Unicorn Gundam is that his little unicorn horn opens up into a V uh, crest like on these guys, uh, and to my knowledge, the figure doesn't do that, so, eh, you know, kind of lost one of the cool gimmicks about it. But, you know, it's uh, it's possible, it's likely, that when Wave 2 hits, which will include the Banshee Unicorn Gundam, I'll regret not having picked up regular Unicorn Gundam, and we'll end up with both. Sounds like something I would do. Wave 2 will also include Death Scythe from Gundam Wing and Barbatos from Iron-Blooded Orphans, which I am currently making my way through. I'm only eight episodes into Season 1, so please, no spoilers. Uh, wave 3, if you're interested, is, uh, if I remember correctly, Strike Gundam, Easy 8 and Sandrock. Uh, I assume they're going to just uh, push their way through the uh, at least all the wingsuits, so that's cool. Uh, these figures were intended to hit the action figure market, specifically, and not just the action figure market, but also to be competitive at the $20 to $30 range. Uh, obviously, there have been other lines at different scales with more articulation and more accessories, but this is really about price point and out-of-the-box uh, usability. And uh, so real quick, I'm going to pull these boxes out of the way here, even though they have really awesome art on them. Uh, and uh, I just want to run through like some size comparisons. You can see all this stuff in the background here. Uh, just sort of a visual chaos of uh, visual noise uh, back here. Uh, but just real quick, I just want to run through. Um, so this is, uh, well, let me show you something that might actually have some applicable scale. Uh, they, they measure out pretty much right at six inches. This is Endgame War Machine uh, that was just recently released. So you can see they stand a little bit smaller than that Marvel Legends figure. Uh, same thing with uh, Bumblebee Optimus Prime. Just a little shy of uh, his height there. Um, slightly taller than this is uh, Mobile Suit in action here. Uh, this is the animated version uh, from Robot Spirits, so just shorter than those. If, if you're already invested in the Robot Spirits line, there's probably no reason to get into this Gundam Universe line, uh, unless you just, you're just you just jonesing for some, some Gundam stuff, like I was. Um, I didn't really get... This is literally... Uh, yeah, this is the only... Uh, I might have one other, actually. Uh, Robot Spirits Gundam piece. Um, but I just, at the 50, 60, you know, dollar price point, more if you missed it. Uh, I think actually most of them run like 75, 80 bucks at this point. Uh, and some are web exclusives and show exclusives. It's just a tough line to collect at that price. They're fantastic figures uh, and far more accessories and posability, blah, 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 whatever. Um, Gundam user Universe is where it's at for me. So uh, that's those. Uh, we've got. Uh uh, that gives you a good enough sense of scale, I think. All this other stuff I just put back here for, you know, I'm just I'm going to clear all this out. Hang on. All right, I cleared away all the uh, visual nonsense and noise back here so we can focus on these two figures. They won't appear too blown out by my booth lights. Uh, RX-78 comes with his shield. He's got a shield mount for his arm, which is actually uh, it's attached to his arm in here. You're not going to be able to see it unless I take his shield off, which I'm not doing. Uh, he's got uh, his beam rifle with has a movable scope, two beam saber blades that are not translucent, the two corresponding uh, beam saber handles that plug into his backpack, a stand mount, and two sets of hands uh, holding in closed fists. I've got the holding hands on him right now. Uh, Wing comes with his shield. Uh, his beam rifle, a shield mount for his arm, a shield handle, uh, his wings, which you do attach to his back. They're not attached in the box. Uh, and then uh, he's also got a stand mount. Both figures came with uh, a sealed stand. <clears throat> they came in a package like this. And it looks like this. Uh, it's got the, the picture 
specifically that the picture of that uh, suit on the package. Um, I don't know if I don't know if these are standard for all the figures that will hit the shelves or special for uh, ordering them direct from Japan. Uh, they weren't in the actual boxes when I received them, so it's definitely seems like a special thing. Uh, as far as these suits are concerned, you may want to add seam lines or like a, a wash or something to bring out some of the details. Uh, they might be a little too clean for you. I do. I personally, I, I don't care about the super clean look. It's uh, it's not something that bothers, bothers me. It's never bothered me with kits. Um, they are exactly what I wanted them to be at the price point that I paid, uh, which is right in that $25 uh, range, depending on where you get it, depending on what the shipping cost is. Um, they do feel a bit lightweight, uh, but heavier than a model kit, uh, especially the ones that don't have an inner frame. Um, they are posable, but not as posable, you know, as as most of the Gundam kits out there. You've got a, you do have a bit of an ab crunch here in both directions. You've got the flaps, you know, the underpants flaps here that uh, flip up. Tight joints. I mean, it does. It feels heavy. It feels sturdy which is something that uh, I really do appreciate. And the Robot Spirits was a little lightweight on, um, but uh, I don't think this is sacrificing anything, uh, that's for sure. And so, you, you know, you've got... They are they are posable, but like definitely not as posable as most Gundam kids. Double-jointed knees, single-jointed elbows, um, ab crunch swivels everywhere. There's no core fighter. Uh, a lot of times Gundam, uh, the old-school Gundams, uh, RX-78 here, will come apart, and there'll be a core fighter in there. Uh, not in this case, it doesn't come apart, uh, and no transformation for wing. Uh, it, it, look, I, I know what I'm getting. I know what this is, and I know what I'm getting myself into. This is MSIA mobile suit in action all over again. I personally haven't been able to collect any Gundam line beyond more than a few figures, and that includes kits, model kits, Gunpla. Uh, but I'm totally ready to do it again. Uh, I loved MSIA. And the fun of that collection was getting your favorite suits and building out the collection with all the suits that you liked. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to having a bunch of suits with this kind of detail and the degree of posability altogether uh, without costing me a million bucks or requiring me to spend hours assembling everything. Not that I don't like doing that. I do. I just don't have the time to do it for every single suit that's out there. And certainly not every single suit that I actually uh, like. Um, if you're not a Gundam fan, uh, these are absolutely, positively, an absolute easy pass. Uh, but if you do see, uh, if you see the suit you like, they're a must-have, so absolutely pick them up. Uh, and you know, hey, if you see two, leave one for the next collector. Uh, thanks for watching this and all of our videos. Hit like, hit subscribe, check out our Patreon if you're in the position to help the channel grow. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite Gundam is, or even a top five if you're so inclined. Uh, for me, RX-78, Death Scythe Hell, Custom, Buster Gundam, Faisalis, and, um... Crossbones. Uh, that's all just based on looks for the most part and off the top of my head. Thanks for watching. Later.